rupture of the urethra is more common in case of male because of its length the length of the male urethra is around 20 cm while in case of the female it is only around 4 cm the along with the length the male urethra it is situated outside the body as the penile part of the urethra while in case of the female it is situated inside the body only the rupture of the urethra in case of the male it is mainly because of the two cause one is the instrumentization during the procedure of the cystoscopy or any further ahead procedures by the surgeon or it may be due to the fall on the perineum if a person walk on a slim wall and he fall in the perineum so the urethra may be compressed between the hard surface and the pelvic arch and that may lead to the rupture of the urethra the membranous part of the urethra is the most common site for the rupture of the urethra at the time of the injury to the membranous urethra it may also damage the perineal membrane which is situated just below it so with the patient of the rupture of the membranous urethra if the patient tries to void the urine the urine may trickle down to the superficial perineal pouch through the ruptured perineal membrane and from the superficial perineal pouch the urine may trickle down to the scrotum deep to the deltoid muscle and then it may reach up to the deep to the deep fascia of the penis and from the deep to the deep fascia of the penis the urine may passes upwards up to the superficial inguinal region and from that it may extend up to the axilla so with the patient having ruptured membranous urethra if he try to void the urine the edematous swelling of the penis as well as the scrotum occur this is because of the extra vagination of the urine so because of this extra vagination of the urine from the membranous urethra to the superficial perineal pouch to the scrotum to the deep fascia of the penis and to the superficial inguinal region the act of the voiding of the urine may lead to the edematous swelling of the scrotum as well as the penis why this extra vagination of the urine may lead to the reaching of the urine up to this much organs because of this cullis fascia is continuous with the deltoid muscle of this scrotum it is also continuous with this box fascia of the penis which is actually the deep fascia of the penis and this fascia it is continuous with this superficial inguinal region which is situated between the scarpa fascia and the external oblique aponeurosis the superficial inguinal region on the both side on the superiorly it is continuous with the space of the axilla so the extra vagination of the urine during rupture of the membranous urethra may reach up to this much areas but this extra vagination of the urine will not reach up to the anterior aspect of the thigh this is because of the presence of the holden's line and this holden's line it is situated here and it passes horizontally from the pubic tubercle and this holden's line the scarpa fascia which is the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall and the fascia lata which is the deep fascia of the thigh both are fused with each other and because of this fusion of the scarpa fascia and the fascia lata will not allow the urine to enter inside the anterior abdominal wall so when we draw one section at the anterior superior iliac spine at the holden's line we can say that this one is the skin and this one is the deep fascia of the thigh and just on the anterior side we find this anterior superior iliac spine so the scarpa fascia which is going to pass from the anterior abdominal wall to the anterior aspect of the thigh they are going to fuse at this holden's line so the urine which may extravasate here may reach up to this holden's line only it cannot trickle down to the anterior aspect of the thigh